let's take a look at magnetic forces. So before we saw that moving charges create magnetic fields. Well now we're going to see that magnetic fields can cause forces on moving charges. And we're going to start out with a couple examples. So let's imagine that we have a magnetic field coming out of the page. I say page, screen, whatever. Magnetic field coming out of this thing that we're looking at. And let's have a positive charge right here. And this positive charge is going to move towards the top of the page. Well, turns out, if that happens, that positive charge will feel a force to the right. Weird. And if I had a negative charge in this field that was moving towards the top of the page, it would feel a force to the left. Strange. Okay, uh, let's look at a different example. Let's say we had a magnetic field pointed towards the top of the page, and I have a positive charge moving to the right. In that situation, the force on this positive charge would be out of the page. And if I had a negative charge, let's put a negative charge right here, and let's make that negative charge not moving. It's stationary. In that case, it feels no force. Weird. Okay. Now let's say we have a magnetic field to the right, and I'm going to have a positive charge moving into the page. In that situation, the force on that positive charge would be towards the bottom of the page. And if I had a negative charge moving out of the page, it would feel a force also towards the bottom of the page. Okay, so what can we learn from this? Well, first of all, magnetic forces do not work like electric forces. The magnetic field and the magnetic force is very different than the electric field and the electric force. Uh, the force is not in a direction, or just simply in the opposite direction, of the field, of the magnetic field. It's more complicated. Something else is happening here. And then the other thing to notice is there's no magnetic force if there's no motion. So what's the pattern here? The pattern here is governed by this equation. F equals QVB sine theta. This gives us the magnitude of the magnetic force on a moving charge within a field. So F here is the magnetic force on a charge. Q is the charge that we're looking at, that we're considering. V is the speed of that charge through the field. B is the strength of the field that the charge moves through. And theta is the angle between the velocity of the charge and the magnetic field. All right, so that gives us the magnitude of the magnetic force. And you can see that if the particle, if the charge is stationary, then V is equal to zero, so the force is equal to zero, okay. But now let's think about the direction. What's going on with that? Because this equation does not give us direction. To get the direction, we need a right-hand rule. And it's different than the right-hand rule that we saw before for the magnetic field around a current. For the right-hand rule here, what we have to do is still start out with your right hand, but you hold your right hand like this. I'm going to try to draw the picture. You draw it so that your thumb is out, kind of perpendicular to the other four fingers. All right? And your fingers are kind of flat. They're pointing out flat from the, the palm. Now, for a positive charge, your fingers go in the direction of the velocity of the charge. You want the magnetic field coming out of your palm. And if you do that, then the force on the positive charge will be in the direction of your thumb. That sounds like I'm insane, and it sounds like I just made that up. But that's the right-hand rule for this. Now, if you have a negative charge, you do the same thing, right? You point your fingers in the direction of the velocity of the charge. The magnetic field comes out of your palm, but now your thumb is pointing in the direction opposite the direction of the force. In other words, the force is in the direction opposite your thumb when you have a negative charge. All right. If you're wondering, like, where did this come from? Why did physicists base all of this on right hands? It comes from math, actually. It comes from a curl or a cross product. Um, so it's a little bit deeper than we want to go into. But trust me. It works. So I want you to notice a couple of things. Also, going back to this equation, notice that if the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is zero degrees or 180 degrees, so that would correspond to a situation where the 
charge is moving in the direction of the field or opposite the direction of the field. If you have a case like that, well, the sine of 0 degrees and the sine of 180 degrees is 0. So in that kit situation, there's no force acting on that particle, that charge that's moving. If the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is 90 degrees or 270 degrees, then that's when you get the maximum amount of magnetic force, because that's when the sine of those angles is equal to 1, which is the maximum value you can get out of sine. Also notice that this equation is telling us that the force on the charge is proportional to its velocity, so greater velocities result in greater forces. The force on the charge is proportional to the magnetic field, so stronger magnetic field indicates you're going to get a greater force. And also the force is proportional to the charge, so larger charges will experience more magnetic forces in the same conditions. So let's go back to the situations we looked at before. So we, if you do that, try it out. Take your right hand, lay it out so your thumb is perpendicular to your fingers, and point your fingers in the direction of the velocity. And take your palm and orient your palm so that the magnetic field is coming out of your palm. So if you do that, then your thumb will point in the direction of the force, which is to the right. And then if it's a negative charge, it's moving towards the top of the page. Well, if it's a negative charge, your hand would be oriented the same. But if it's a negative charge, the force is in the direction opposite the thumb. There we go. Okay, now let's say we have a magnetic field towards the top of the page, positive charge moving to the right. Okay, let's see. Point your fingers of the right hand in the direction of the velocity. Orient your palm so the magnetic field comes out of your palm. And then your thumb. Look at that pointing out of the page. It works. And then for that negative charge that wasn't moving, that situation, well, if it's not moving, F is equal to QVB sine theta. If V is equal to zero, then the force is equal to zero. There you go. All right, now let's get a magnetic field pointed to the right. Positive charge that's traveling into the page. Okay, if you do that, point your fingers in the direction of the velocity, point them into the page. Orient your palm so that the magnetic field is coming out of your palm. If you do that, force is toward the bottom of the page. And if we have a negative charge that's coming, that uh, has a velocity that's coming out of the page, okay, orient your fingers so they're coming out of the page, orient your palm so that it's facing to the right, and then if you do that, your thumb points towards the top of the page, but this is a negative charge, so the force is in the opposite direction toward the bottom of the page. All right, take some practice. Don't worry if it's a little bit murky right now. You need some practice. So what about a current? What if we have a current traveling through a magnetic field? Does it feel a magnetic force? Well, yes, it does. Let's imagine that we have a current traveling to the right through a magnetic field. Well, a current is just moving charge. If we have moving charge through a magnetic field, it'll absolutely feel a force. So let's imagine we have this length of current, a length L of current that's traveling through a magnetic field. And let's say that the current is traveling to the right. Well, let's see. Our equation that we had before is that the force on a charge moving through a field is QVB sine theta. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of math magic or physics magic, equation magic. I'm going to replace V, the velocity of the charge, with L over T, okay? Where L is the length that the charge travels in time T, okay? I'm going to do a little... Well, rearranging, I'm just going to move that t in the denominator so that it's under the q. So I have q over t times lb sine theta. Well, hey, q over t, that's the current. So now I have current lb sine theta, or if I rearrange it, f is equal to bil sine theta. Now there's a little bit of hand waving in there. I'm not going to go over all the details, but that's kind of the, the general gist of it. So the force on a length of current in a magnetic field is equal to BIL sine theta, where B is the strength of the magnetic field, I is the current, L is the length of the current within the magnetic field, and theta is now the angle between the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field. And if we wanted to figure out the force, the direction of the force, we'd use the exact same right-hand rule that we just used, except now, instead of pointing our fingers in the direction of the velocity, we point our fingers in the direction of the current. Try a little example. Let's say we have a current moving directly to the right. 
We have a magnetic field oriented towards the top of the page. Well, let's see. Then we point our fingers in the direction of the current, orient our palm so the magnetic field is coming out of our palm, and if we do that, then the force on this piece of uh, current that's going through a magnetic field would be out of the page.